everyone. Welcome to Stamina Podcast. My name is Christian Puckett. My name is Levi Lobo. And I'm Shailene Louise Bishop. And today we talked about gardening and having healthy soil. We talked about proper texting etiquette in the modern age. And then lastly, we talked to Shailene about balancing being a full-time mother and a full-time artist. So enjoy the podcast. for your next podcast okay let's okay, hear it. i think you guys should play chess while you talk but you i don't want you acknowledging the game <laughs> just be playing just be playing just periodically uh, your move levi oh wait that, that would even be too yeah, much yeah, yeah. yeah okay. it just has to be it but if you could I'm, play I'm chess piece, if you could play chess I'd without like somewhere. pausing you know what i mean without like really thinking too hard about what you're doing that is funny did you notice the chess board oh that's the first thing i noticed really I literally don't like I don't even think about it. I need to take these un- out out from under it. Yeah. I'm really like I really don't like chess, but I am really tuned into like a oh, board game. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Game. I'm a, I I'm a <laughs> game. I play chess pretty like seriously for a little you while. You do? You did. I did. Okay. Yeah, cuz my friends I have a friend who's like a programmer. He works at Google and he's like very analytical in the way he thinks about things. Yeah. And he um he doesn't really have to do anything at Google. <laughs> like, he wouldn't want me to say that, but he's like... Good job. Yeah, and so he just kind of, like, works from home and gets bored and just looks up, like, all of the strategies on chess. Wow, mm. just, like, all the gambits. Oh, yeah, all yeah. of the... He, he, there's one called the Martinez turn or something. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> really? No. Uh, I was like, what? <laughs> the Martinez turn. What is, do you know what that is? It's basically when you have... It, you go six moves in, so you play, there's a standard way of playing chess. That's yeah. like the best uh, statistically way of winning. And so you would have to be the the black, because black goes second, I believe. Um, and you have to play that specific way up to six moves. Mm-hmm. And the other person has to play that specific way up oh, to okay. six moves. So the, the, it's very <laughs> unlikely that it'll happen? No, if two players are good and they're following s- standard, like, rules rules like that's the moment where like oh they did some the other player could think that they made a mistake oh, yeah wow. and at that point if they make a specific move then you can pivot and then basically the game's over yeah because you trap them yeah. and all of their other pieces are trapped behind the pawns and i admire like, people who play chess i think it's it it overwhelms me like it just there's too many options and different ways it could go yeah. But maybe I should give it another chance. To be honest, it's been like 10 or 15 years since I've even attempted to play. Maybe so. maybe we could start together because okay. I also feel like I'm such a noob and yeah, I feel like it, I would want to start with another noob Yeah, and then to, to learn kind of together. Okay. In that vein, Dan, my husband, he's been really getting into playing magic magic, magic the, gathering. the gathering whoa so i didn't know into that it. so he he like went and joined some buddies who were playing and they were like setting up their deck he got really into it he didn't know how to play it. this was like a month ago so then he got the app and he has been playing so much and so <laughs> I, I, basically, there was an app. I basically know that if dan has his phone like horizontal he's playing he's <laughs> playing magic and, but it's starting to get to the point where now i'm like what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm reading. I'm like, what's she reading? He's like, an article. I'm like, it's about magic strategy, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I'm reading. And yeah. so then he got like some physical decks <laughs> and he like really wants to teach me. I'm like, I don't want to play with you. Like you're getting way too into it. Like it's like reading strategy articles. Yeah. Like, oh, gosh. That doesn't sound fun to me. <laughs> yeah. I, Jake Germany got me really into Magic the Gathering oh. when we were on tour back in the day. Him and all the, I the didn't Tyler know you Texas. were into it. Well, I mean, be. only yeah. when, when like warp, warp tour time sure. uh, and like all the Tyler Texas buddies, but we got really into it on warp tour and that was really fun. But I, I really have not played it since yeah. then, but it was fun. Well, Dan's got some decks, so yeah, sure I was be glad stacked. To have a buddy. I was, I had a, <laughs> I was bill. I put some money into it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's an app too, apparently. So. I know. I and didn't, the app's I didn't like know there was free, but you know, they have all these ways. Micro to like, oh, yeah. Get you. Yeah. yeah. In game. Yeah. Um, so this is my sister Shailene to all the listeners and viewers. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, Shailene. You're gonna say <laughs> Cause I don't know what to say. Yeah. Um, okay. So I am Shailene, Christian's sister. I am 32, just turned 32 on Thursday. And I 
I paint flowers for a living. I have a little a little cute one year old. My husband's Dan. He really likes magic. <laughs> and he's a silversmith, which just sounds really funny to say that in context of him <laughs> playing magic. Yeah, he's getting into witchcraft. <laughs> <laughs> um, somebody recently was like, Dan was telling him about like how he grew up being a chimney sweep because his dad, and now he's a silversmith, and they're like. A chimney sweep and a silver sweep? Like, those sound like such, like, old, like, 1800s Well, trades. his last name is Bishop, so yeah. I mean, you got to live up that to the last true. name. Well, it's like, silversmith to me, I'm like, I think maybe they heard silversmith and they thought, like, blacksmith, and they're thinking of, like, hitting anvils and stuff, but... You're kind of, you're hitting, like, mini anvils with yeah. silversmith. Oh, yeah, he's out there, he's out there, like, pounded on metal yeah. in some ways. Yeah, it's but. just, like, tiny. Mm -hmm. like, You've been yeah. getting into ring making, right? I, I was for, like, a good like three months or six months when uh <laughs> <laughs> when um i was working with chad my yeah. cousin Who and that's that's well? how chad uh dan got into it, it was because of chad yeah so chad. now colton's getting into it. i know it's i like colton, uh, yeah expanding yeah wow which is funny because colton already has like people wanting him to make rings for him and stuff really yeah interesting yeah. that's, that's cool. awesome yeah that's great i mean it's a great place for it being yeah. in New Mexico, it's like a very New Mexico thing. And so is art. Actually, I just got this book the other day. At, there was this used book sale in Corrales at the library. You should have seen, like, how big. <laughs> Good move. For people <laughs> just listening. Oh, wait. I feel like we <laughs> should acknowledge it. <laughs> Lee and I are playing chess throughout this podcast. <laughs> so if there's moments of silence... Or chuckling. <laughs> Which is oh, if people, very yeah, people don't see it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, Corrales books. Oh yeah. So so there was like so many art books there, just because New Mexico everybody's artists. Um, but I found this really great book about like intuitive composition written by the Santa Fe author, and I like looked him up. It was like a thirty-year-old book, thirty-five years. I looked him up, and he's like this eighty-five-year-old guy who's still killing it, and he like mm. hosts all these like seminars of like plein air painting. And I was just like, New Mexico is so cool. Like, I don't think people think it is, but the art and creative world, it's amazing. Yeah. I just love it so much. I agree. There's like a really cool organic like art community that uh, is kind of like hidden. But once you start seeing it, like, like it's there mm -hmm. more and more. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Do you think that's exclusive to New Mexico or do you think... You know, we're just seeing all the artists because we are living here. There's no other artists <laughs> anywhere else. No, I mean, just like the geography or the fact that it's just so kind of like brutal and barren out here. Does that have anything to do with creating artists? I don't know. So, you know, that I, I, I don't want to butcher this statistic, but I think that New Mexico is the uh, the third highest volume of art sales after new york and california no way yeah oh yeah yeah santa oh fe is there's hmm. there's so much art in santa fe wow. um and i mean you think about like the legacy of like you know george o'keefe coming here in like what 30s or something like that uh there's a lot of artists who like they make like a pilgrimage out here mark maggiore he's like one of those artists who I don't know if you guys know who he is. I don't know. No. He's like this French guy who came out here and he does these beautiful Southwest um, kind of like these oh, he's, landscapes he's like and horses. Young. Yeah. 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 Oh, I think you've seen his art. Super yeah. detailed. Su super detailed. Chad, okay, Chad yeah. has one of his pieces, I think. Right. I doubt it. Oh. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe I think he does. he does in his shop. Dang. Is Anyways, it, uh, is it like an original or? I don't know. His, I think his so. originals are expensive. Yeah, I don't know. I th he was really proud of it when he showed me. So. Okay. He could be, or I could just be completely. Okay, maybe rude. he does. Maybe yeah. he does. Yeah. But also, we have another friend who has one of his sketches, and they, they spent a lot for it. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure his stuff is amazing. Yeah. Our, my the woman that works for my mom, Marie, she was going to be his assistant for. She like, like applied to be his assistant and was talking with them because they were looking yeah. for like a somebody to help him with whatever. But I mean, and even yeah. besides him, there's so many like pretty well known artists. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of them are more so in Taos and Santa Fe. I don't think uh, people have got the let out about Albuquerque yet, but <laughs> somebody asked me, one of my friends, she's actually an artist who lives in Santa Fe. Her name is Janine. She's awesome. But she was just like, so why do you guys live in Albuquerque? Like, <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? She's like, you just seem a little more Santa Fe. <laughs> I was like, I like Albuquerque. <laughs> but also yeah. Corrales is beautiful. Yeah. Like, 
Yeah. That's it's its own it's little just, ecosystem. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's very, like, I feel like that's very Santa Fe-ish or, like, small town-ish. Yeah. Like, it is. That is the most, in my opinion, the most beautiful part of Albuquerque. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's great. I'm and then there's like Fourth Street. Beater. There's like a weird little patch in Fourth Street that's like really beautiful. Too. Like where all the lights are hanging yeah. up and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Like by Vernon's, the speakeasy and stuff. It's I just like, love Fourth Street. Yeah. Love Fourth Street. That's like if I if I have to go to Albuquerque, I'll either take Rio Grande down or Fourth Street down. I just all the slow. I love the slow mm-hmm. roads. You know, roads with all the local shops. And, and before stuff. before I moved, like uh, I moved when I was like 22 to Nashville for seven years. Before that, I remember if I was going to go to Albuquerque fast road get there you know like that mm-hmm. young like get there quick now though i just i love a slow drive <laughs> i hate when somebody's behind me like, i think kids contributes to that too you're like what's the longest route i can sure. take just <laughs> just, just for have, a little bit of peace just to have a minute <laughs> oh you're funny totally right. because like when i'm driving and there's a person that's just enjoying it's me <laughs> i'm like oh my god get out of my way <laughs> but in your truck i feel and like then i drive by and i'm like oh shoot it's shaylene okay. <laughs> That for truck sure. you have is meant for for cruising, man. For yeah, taking it slow. It is because it can't really go too fast. Same with my truck. If I try to hop on the freeway, my engine is smoking afterwards. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gosh, especially when it was like 106 degrees the other day. But brutal. Anyways. Yeah. Do you do your yeah. your truck does not have AC, right? It does not have AC, so, so I roll the windows down and hope for the best. Just wear like a loose shirt. Even that sounds kind of yeah. nice. I kick off my shoes, like, right when I get yeah. off work, I, like, take off my shoes, open up all the windows, like, there's, yeah. like, a that is protocol so, to drive That's driving. very nostalgic to me. Like, being in a truck with no AC, with the windows down, just reminds me of my childhood in New Mexico, like, because I feel yeah. like dad's trucks were always like that. Right, yeah. And it's like, okay, well, I, I'm constantly in air-conditioned, mm-hmm. like, sh- shaded like indoors and stuff so it's like okay i can i can handle 15 minutes 20 minutes of being really hot because i i mean it's it's good for me to sweat it all out you know during that just a few minutes it's, it's like not a, that bad. a free uh free sauna, sauna. yeah, yeah. <laughs> really, like last summer when like covid with like all the saunas were shut down i was like all right grab a towel and i'm gonna go sit in the truck for like an hour and a half and i was drenched in sweat it's really funny only christian would be like yeah you know during covid when all the saunas were closed (laughs) that was like very low on my (laughs) like yeah man i need access to a sauna for me it was like i want to go to a coffee shop (laughs) yeah that's what i missed it's just yeah and now they're back and i'm barely going same (laughs) yeah i don't I feel like yeah, it just changed the, the way we live too. Yeah. The whole COVID era. But it really did. Yeah. And also having a kid in the midst of that, like I'm just like, is it just different because the world is different or is yeah. it just this season of my life feels so different? So you both had kids like pretty this, much back to back. We were like four, four or five months, months apart. apart. Wow. Yeah. Uh, That's so cool to be able to like grow up together. I know. Yeah, they're already like little homies. Yeah, they are. Oh, um the other bites. day, uh Emmy and mom and I, we went and did the Corrales Garden Tour. And Aesop stayed with Dan. And so Raf was asleep, my son Raphael. He was asleep. And then when he woke up, he saw Ra- uh, the Aesop was there. And really? He was all, he was all excited. <laughs> and then Dan sent a picture of the two, the boys, like, uh, just playing with each other. <laughs> but I guess right after he sent that photo, like, all hell broke loose. And they were just crying the whole time. <laughs> yeah. It was bad. It was sport. Dan for I, watching. Yeah, he, did, he didn't really have much of a... I mean, he's just on his phone playing Magic the Gathering <laughs> the entire time. Dan. <laughs> Honestly, that's been my kind of excuse to like, let me put Aesop to bed tonight and I'll like bring my Switch in and like <laughs> play 30 minutes before bed. That's really funny. I've been really into audiobooks, so I'll put Raphael to bed and just like have my audiobook there. Yeah. You don't have headphones? You just. I do have headphones. Like, I don't know phone. why I just opt to just hold it by my head. <laughs> I have one pair of, they have like these Bluetooth speakers. Oh. So I'll use those sometimes. But they make me feel kind of disconnected from life in a way that I don't like. So I just like to. Like, like Bluetooth that goes in, go in your no, ears? No, no. I have like, like the big ones. Oh, I got all scared because I heard that like the uh, <laughs> AirPods are just like the Bluetooth connection is going straight through your brain. Okay. So I actually asked Andrew. Yeah. Um, While? I don't know. Uh, oh. Andrew, Heidi's husband. <laughs> uh, Goodman, I'm Goodman. sorry. Yeah, <laughs> um, Andrew. <Wild. laughs> 
<laughs> wow. I mean, I would love to ask Andrew Weil you any sort of question, but I'll take Andrew Goodman, you know, as a, as a nice second. But that's funny. I at the wedding, I asked him about. We were talking about Bluetooth headphones, and I was yeah. like, or I think we were talking about Apple Watches, but I was just t- talking about EMF, and he's like, honestly, I don't think you need to worry about it because they're not actually like transmitting anything, and. I, I I guess all that to say I don't know enough about EMF or Bluetooth frequency going, you know, right. through your head or sure. like I I don't know I'm I'm kind of pes- like skeptical at the moment so I'm trying to just limit it but is it actually doing anything Yeah I don't know I'll let I feel like else Levi the, might know a little I'll bit I'll let more everybody else be the guinea pigs though I'm just like right. yeah same right. after that conversation we had on the podcast about the the frequencies I bought like the <laughs> <laughs> Levi has a tinfoil hat. No. Yeah, it's right over there, actually. I should Dang, I want to see. You're kidding. I'll grab what it. <laughs> Throw it on for a the pod, foil. dude. This How about this like content? It's a tinfoil hat. It's just a... Like, it just like protects... A, it has like it's an EMF fabric. blocker, right? A, <laughs> <laughs> Where did you buy these? I got all sketched out. And it was like one in the morning, and I was like, "Man, you know what I need? Aww. I need to be able to protect my head from the." Now you're just keeping stuff. the signal in there with you. It's <laughs> okay, but I called my, I put my phone in here, and then I called it, and it didn't ring. What? Yeah, do you want to see? I mean, it's like a weird fabric. I've done that with a microwave before. Hmm. Really? Like if you put your phone, you, you technically will know your microwave has a good seal if you put your phone in there and you're not able to call it. Hmm. So kind of same idea. My friend has a cell phone <laughs> cover that's a EMF protector or whatever. <laughs> the yeah. problem with it is they put the fabric like they put a small ring of the fabric but the hat's longer than yeah. that so it just like it, it's not big enough <laughs> for my rests head on top okay i'm just yeah. where what context would you wear that though like uh it, i wore it to the gym and everyone's like are you a sikh are you like a monk <laughs> yeah oh, wow. i was like no i'm just trying to protect my brain from emf waves or whatever <laughs> i don't know it was more of a joke it was more of like a late night really bad idea yeah. Buy. Some people <laughs> never wear it. Like, and... are legitimately like, you know, a little sketched out by it. But I just, I don't know if there's any merit to it or not. Okay, here's a question. Uh, and I, I think I have my answer. But what do you think is more dangerous for you, like the actual EMFs or like the anxiety or fear people have around, mm. around it? The latter. Yeah. And see, I think, yeah, I don't want to like live my life just always like stressed out about everything. Because at the end of the day, you could do all the things right, and then a car accident will get you. Or something. You know what I mean? It's just like yeah. you yeah. got to make your the wisest decisions you can, but you can't just like try and control. It's just like that's just <laughs> right. control. This is a desire to control yeah. the variables. I think yeah. where I was it's also like seventy like, bucks or sixty bucks of waste. Oh, money, pr- so. pricey! Yeah, that was like right, ten. Resell them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I could reuse the fabric. Yeah. No, that's a really good point you're bringing up, though. Like, how often do we get fearful and scared about something, and that is in fact like causing a lot of damage equally to our body for something oh, yeah. that statistically probably wouldn't uh affect us absolutely so. yeah and i mean i'll i'll say this because i don't i don't mind going there but like just in the last couple of years like we met a lady recently who um she was at a garage sale and she saw our son and was like oh my gosh he's so cute i have a son the same age and she's like wow he's so smiley he's so um i think she was saying like responsive or he's so animated and i guess her son who is a day older than Raphael, Whoa. is super unresponsive he doesn't smile he doesn't because he hasn't been around other kids during the pandemic mm, she's completely yeah. kept him isolated because she wants to wait for a vaccine for babies mm-hmm. and i was just like oh you know like yeah he's he loves his friends he loves people he's been very socialized to so many people his whole life and it just kind of broke my heart that you know our own fear is stunting kids you know yeah. like that's just yeah for fear you know yeah emily and i tried our best during COVID because he was born early 2021 and we just tried our best to really socialize him with or at least like probably not other kids his age i mean but of course his cousin and like just like introduce like bring him out in public make sure he's not afraid of people you know once this is all over and i got to admit Everybody compliments Azop on his like social ability, mm-hmm. and they're like, yeah, "Oh, he's so yeah, too. Yeah, smiley." The pediatrician and, today, he's like, "Wow, you guys have done a great job." Like he's, yeah, he, he reacts, responds, he interacts, oh. and it's just I don't know. Like life is so full of 
danger. And I do feel like just trying to like protect mm-hmm. your kids from a virus when it's like they so many terrible things could happen to your kid. You don't even yeah. want to know. Yeah. And you protecting them from being around other people is not going to, that's not going to help them. I'm sorry. It's just like that made me really yeah. sad. Emily was saying something about like she was looking at something on Instagram or YouTube or maybe you showed her, but it was like child and kids safe sand. Like, <laughs> oh, like you can make this like oh my gosh. safe for kids Stop. dirt that they can play in and it's made from like Cheerios and just like. That makes like, me like one. That makes me so sad and also angry because it's just like. Kids should be eating dirt. Like, they <laughs> yeah, should Aesop's be eating dirt. like swallowing rocks and like twigs. Oh, and I take Raphael to the garden and he'll stand by the garden bed and just eat. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if you should be doing that. But yeah. also, like, kids have clearly been doing that forever. If that's his instinct, that's a human instinct. It very is much instinctual. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. right away, they're putting anything and anything. everything in their mouth because that's how they, like, Build sense immunity, the world yeah. is like, how does this taste? Yeah. Like, how does this feel in my mouth? Which is really interesting, but that's their, like, introduction into new yeah. things, at least when they're infants. I think it's amazing, because at the same time, they're, like, they're exploring, like you say, but they're also building up that, like, immunity. I think it's so cool. Yeah. So, anyways, is yeah. Is that a hard thing to do as a parent? <clears throat> Let it happen. For both of you? Yeah, like, releasing, like, trusting that they will be okay. Like... Yeah. For me, it is. I don't know if you feel that way. Well, I think... I can see that it's benefited him. I can see he's, you know, progressing in a, in a normal, it's happy, healthy way. Yeah. Um, of course, I'm going to step in if he picks up something he shouldn't. Um, oh, you I know. don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. It's, it's like, okay, I clean out a chicken coop, yeah, you know, yeah. once a week. And it's like, okay, I need Aesop away. From, like, I'm yeah. relatively smart about it. But if it's just like sand or soil from the garden, I'm like, I think... I remember hearing some like something somewhere, but it's like one tablespoon or one like spoonful of healthy organic soil has more microorganisms and bacteria and viruses and all that than there are like people on this planet. And oh this, there's like billions and billions and billions just in like a handful of dirt or something like that. Like That's incredible. I might have butchered that, but Isn't I that think from there's the book something you're reading the <laughs> Yeah, eat, yeah, eat yeah. Dirt. I'm eating eat dirt. Oh, <laughs> I which a, is on point the, to this conversation. Uh, Josh X. Uh yeah, X, yeah. yeah. One of his earlier books. Um Eat Dirt. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> Great just time. all about oh, yeah. establishing your your uh, gut flora, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. What and have I, you learned so far in that? That's like um, Besides, like eating that. a spoonful of eat dirt, eat a spoonful of dirt with your breakfast. <laughs> no, and, and, and he even like that. he even says he's like, okay, I'm not actually saying go out and eat dirt, <laughs> which I mean you you could, but well, he probably would be a proponent of just eating vegetables straight out of the garden. That, that's that's the whole say, point. Is that, that yeah. Yeah, um, like yeah. yeah, this like hyper sanitation, especially yeah. now, um, of just making sure everything is pristine and clean and absolutely no dirt. And he he just talks about okay, so if you're gonna like if you're gonna grow a carrot or a radish, like you were. Uh, eating yesterday yeah you're gonna have even if you like rinse it off a little bit you're still like all those black spots you know that's like kind of embedded dirt and just eat that like it's it's grounding you to your like immediate community it's helping with like allergies and you know you're getting these like micro immunizations to uh, you know your surroundings and it's just compare that to the perfectly cut and clean Mm. like baby carrots that you're going to buy from the (laughs) store and it's like you know of course you know that can still be healthy but if you're if you're talking about um you know establishing healthy bacteria that's how you want to do it is you want to eat you know eat from the you know from the ground um of your immediate surroundings and that'll help out with like allergies and sicknesses and all that stuff that was Mm. a good summary that's yeah. great, and I've, be great I'm still in chapter one. So, <laughs> wow. wow. So, what do you how uh, what do you think about? Because I'm not worried about dirt so much, but I don't like the idea of sharing um, produce with squirrels and skunks and like you know because like there's this, yeah. this giant dumb squirrel <laughs> ate all of my butter lettuce and I had oh. so much of it, but I was just like, oh wow, we're eating a lot of lettuce, and then my dad saw it mm. and. It's just a bummer because it's like down to the nubs. And it was like the only thing that was yeah, going on. So, bummer. okay. So then I'm like, okay, I want to grow it back, but I don't like the idea of like a squirrel's mouth being on the same. <laughs> I don't know. It just feels like a lot more 
offensive. <laughs> well, apparently, uh, plants that have undergone some sort of trauma, like critters oh. or bugs eating it, will grow back even more nutritious. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. if, um, if you can, you know, let it grow this time, maybe put wow. some like chicken wire over it, it yeah. should be yeah. like it's fighting to survive now. So it's going to okay. potentially come back even here's, stronger. Here's a question. Do you think humans have that same defense mechanism in us? I would certainly hope so. I mean, I have yeah. heard that, you know, scar tissue is stronger than regular tissue. Um, it's definitely like tougher. Feels, yeah, it feels <laughs> yeah, tougher. Um, I don't know, Levi, what do you think? I would say, <clears throat> yeah, but it, it sounds similar to what Abba was talking about on the last podcast with the... If you have a reason to live or if you have a reason why, then you oftentimes can get through more trauma or more stuff than you would think you can or what you think your body can actually take. Yeah. Um, she was talking about this book by a guy that was talking about uh, the Jews getting through persecution and, and the Holocaust. Yeah. And it's like, if you have a reason why, wow, then it's easier to. And so I think, yeah, I think humans... Wow. I mean, I've never been vaccinated. I've like my whole life. Really? Like, yeah, out, like not even outside or out of the context of COVID and all that, like yeah. ever. And um, I feel very strong. Yeah. I feel very good. I feel very yeah. okay. Um, but my mom always taught us to, to keep, be responsible for what we're putting in our bodies mm. and yeah. be smart with that, drink water uh, and listen to your body. And I think that that was a, I'm just so lucky. I think like I look back and I'm yeah. just like, man, the growing up the way I grew up is like such a lucky, privileged thing to be able to go through because people grow up just like going to the store and getting hot Cheetos or going to and eating just this excessive of which you definitely did. Oh yeah, I did. But <laughs> we we both did that like in our you know when we were out teens. of that. Yeah, <laughs> when we were out of the the mom's thing. But yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. Like I think for sure we do um, as people. Trauma, we can. Well, it, it depends, right? But that is the that is the, the that's the point of contention. Is like, will you grow back stronger or will you not? Right. Yeah. Um, well, and I think of both of you guys have definitely had your your share of, of really difficult circumstances in life, you know. Mm -hmm. And I do think that it's given you both, I would say, like a depth of character that maybe you didn't used to have. I think it's really important for humans to go through hard things. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think that a lot of Western people have the privilege of going through hard things. It's horrible when you're going through it. Not that I've gone through stuff that's that hard, but you know. I mean, things. you gave birth. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of crazy, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was short. It was a you know, it was a day. <laughs> but you know, actually, even that, like, I was, I had a little a little Instagram post the other day that was just like, it's crazy how the most painful, difficult thing I've ever gone through produced what I would argue is like the absolute best thing in my life. The thing that's cr produced the most joy, sweetness, happiness, fulfillment. And mm -hmm. it's just like, and somebody responded and she's like, isn't it interesting how a lot of times it's the hardest things in life that produce the things that are just the best, you know? Mm -hmm. So that is kind of a life principle back to the lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. That lettuce is like, this is the hardest thing ever. <laughs> I no. want to be so strong and nutritious. <laughs> that squirrel t try and take a bite and break a tooth. <laughs> Do you think that plants are as conscious as humans? I think that, not that I know anything, but I do wonder if they have their own. It's just different than ours. A different type of consciousness, a different type of communication and connectedness. So I, talking to Colton, who has a degree in uh, geology, he would argue that all living things are evolved, quote unquote, how, whatever you believe on that, but uh, at the same uh, intricacy as humans. Wow. So like we assume that we're the most smartest being, but just based on the fact that there are other things here right now, they are just in different ways. And so I, I always thought that that was interesting and like a humbling thing to hear like, wow. oh yeah, they... They're here just as much as we are and have gone they through are. so much yeah. change and so much like. And they cover 
more ground than we do. Like yeah. we, because I think we kind of think, oh well, we've built all this like infrastructure and cities and roads and plants. But it's like, but also look at plant life. Look how like it'll come through the tiniest little crack, and yeah. you know, it's just it's amazing. It's yeah, like even look at like like Chernobyl. We yeah. were watching this yeah. like kind of documentary. It was a nature documentary, but. About. If you look at Chernobyl now, is that the name of the city? Is that it? I think so. It was okay. in Russia, right? Yeah, yeah, but it is. It won't be bothered. I mean, there is like luscious plants growing all over the building. There's, there's wildlife wow. yeah. just in abundance. And yeah, I mean, humans probably scuffed it up for 50 <laughs> years, 100 years, however, however long it was. But uh, I feel like in the in the grand scheme of life, like nature's like okay like that's gonna be ours now we're gonna take that over um, life finds a way just by by time it's just a matter yeah. of time is like okay yeah. thanks we'll take that back yeah exactly take it back yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. i feel like i've sort of been entering this place where i'm starting to kind of agree with that mindset of just maybe we're just so arrogant in thinking that we're the most dominating mm -hmm. species on this planet when i mean even if i just watch like a couple documentaries which i know is very limited into like the intricacies of other lives you're dealing with stuff that you cannot comprehend with like plants and and other animals and the soil like oh my god just the soil alone is so i'm just kind of dipping yeah. my toes into it but it is so intricate and it is another planet and it's like i was kind of thinking of the metaphor i was trying to think of a good me metaphor i'm still kind of working on it but like for growing produce in your ground um like i want whatever i grow out of the ground to be connected to the earth so like i'm kind of trying to visualize it as like you floating on top of the ocean in a pool or like something like, or like you're like trying to go fishing in the ocean, but you're fishing on top of a pool that's floating on top of the ocean. It's like, oh, you're not going to yeah. actually get all the goodness and the nutrients and the, the life that is a part of our planet. If you're kind of just on top of it, you have to be connected to it. And, mm. um, Interesting. it, it, it's an ocean down there that have just like, so like we have no idea what's actually going on just like the bottom of the ocean like we don't actually know yeah. i mean we're starting to learn more about it but who, wow, who am really i to say that i've never like, thought about that like we're the most yeah like we're the most dominant like sophisticated species it's like uh, we're maybe just up here on the surface exactly yeah, yeah like there's it's like the planet is like 70 percent water like mm -hmm. yeah just, i don't know so wild. just throwing that out there i think it's 70 something like that yeah <laughs> yeah but it's Mostly, more yeah. more that than yeah and it also is like layered like right like like earth is like like you things can work on like one dimension on earth unless we build and stack mm -hmm. but like in the water it's like things can live up and down because they're in water right so like yeah it's just totally different uh, there was a so i talked to this is kind of a random thing we can jump back into whatever but i'll make it quick i talked to this guy i found on instagram that said he found or he saw a, a, a flying saucer <laughs> um and he said he saw it and he said that the police mm. department saw it and i sent it to you um yeah i remember that and i'm, I'm messaging back and forth with them to see if we can get the footage of the actual like flying saucer that he saw but he described it in a specific way and then he said it flew into the water after whoa and he said he had because he's a he's like a uh a uh, guy that uh, hunts he's a hunter mm -hmm. so he was out in the woods and then like pulled his scope up to see and he said it had like panels on it like solar panel type things and hmm. then afterwards uh he ran towards it and that's when it zigged and zagged and then dipped into this water into water yeah and is he so, from here in town no i think he's in like idaho or something like that but but you're uh, trying to you, get him hey on the you know uh, uh, uncle yeah. uncle johnny they saw a ufo really i didn't know that yeah yeah like it was like 20 something years ago they were looking for cattle on their ranch this is our uncle who lives in taos taos yeah hopefully this is okay if i share this story <laughs> but from, i don't even i don't even know if i heard it from him i heard it from my aunt but i think they were like out looking for some livestock that went missing and then out of the blue there was just this giant light over them like super fast and then it was gone not Dang. maybe it was something different but i mean they were and they were also thrown off by it they're like what was that yeah i know somebody else weird. too somebody else i really trust saw 
it was more of like a in the sky kind of thing but i saw one flying back from california to here i saw this like little pill like flying 100 feet above the ground and i was like i don't know a thousand or however seven thousand however high planes mm-hmm. flying and it was like zigging and zagging and zigging and zagging and it just like was gone but it was out in yeah. like past uh the airport and but oh. a lot of the sightings have been near airports so it could be yeah i've heard that they're also near uh or, nuclear bases yeah makes you think i mean <laughs> i don't know okay so just like a couple weeks ago i was it was whenever i had that lavender debacle i don't oh, know yeah. i don't know what it was anyway but when you overdosed on lavender i was, i did not hear that story but keep, keep going <laughs> and you can go back on the podcast okay. i think okay. i got lavender poisoning because i think i overdid it but you ate it i took a bath <laughs> with a bunch of like fresh lavender and i I, I don't know. I could, I think if you overdo it on lavender, it could toxify your blood. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, but okay. I was like out of commission for 36 hours, like in bed, trying to just like sleep it off and sweat it out. But anyway, um, I was just in my backyard in my hammock, just looking up. And I was thinking about the fact that I never really look up. And I feel like a lot of people are not really looking up these days. They're kind of mm. looking down on yeah. their phones and their screens and whatever. But I was just looking up. And I just saw three uh, like white drones and they were doing this like weird formation. And I, I think they were drones. I mean, I don't think they were, it was a UFO, but I think it was some sort of government thing, I would assume. But I was just like staring up and there's these three white drones just like doing this like formation for just like going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth for, for as long as I was looking it up there. I just kind of, at one point I was like, okay, well, this is not going to stop. So, mm. but I was just like, it was so, so, so high up that I would never, ever, ever yeah. see it unless I was specifically looking for it. Unless you're poisoned from lavender. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe <laughs> go hard on lavender. Um, but like... I'm going to go get a lavender latte after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's probably that's probably the right dosage yeah. of lavender. But um, I just think that, yeah, I think our, our government and people with technology to do stuff like that are probably doing things um on this planet is it extraterrestrial i believe that there is but i don't know if the ones that we're seeing for sure uh is extraterrestrial uh yeah i I, i've I've been looking for ufos my whole life not like and i haven't like traveled for like (laughs) but i just i just feel like in my whole life ever since i was a kid my great grandma she believed in uh no i'm sorry my grandma mom's mom she believed and she told me about like alien abductions when I was like seven and I was just like, Oh my gosh, if she thinks this is a real threat, I need to be very concerned. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyways, I think since that, like that kind of like put like this thing in my head of like, okay, like keep an eye out. Like, <laughs> yeah. so I would just always be kind of like watching. I've never seen anything mm. and I don't know if I really, I don't really know what to think about it. I think it's yeah. interesting though. It was weird when I saw that thing. I like, yeah. I don't know what it was. I just know it was like doing weird stuff that I've never seen like a ship do. Yeah. Like it wasn't a plane and it was flying really low and it was fast and it wasn't a drone. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it could have been like a low flying drone. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Um, right. Drones are, those are throwing something into the yeah, mix there. <laughs> yeah. And drones have existed for 10 years or something. I was talking to a buddy, Eric, and he was saying that like, he was in Afghanistan and he was saying they were doing facial recognition on the Afghani mm, ca- yeah. uh, 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 civilians yeah. so that they wouldn't have any casualties. They can like scan their faces and then know who have a database of the, of the people. And that was 10 years ago. And now we're doing that on, on our population through, you know, phones and all uh, Snapchat, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just so interesting, like what trickles to the general public in terms of technology and i'm yeah. i just i probably assume, i assume that it's all just like technology that's being tested and has to be tested somewhere yeah yeah and uh yeah it can't be released to the public for like uh national security reasons like that's where i'm just kind of like okay yeah maybe so yeah because yeah. we don't want other foreign doesn't countries, it bug you to feel you know? doesn't it bug you to like just be like i don't like being in the dark like, <laughs> i like i want to be in the know but it's yeah. just like I have no qualifications. <laughs> yeah. I had a Even, friend, I, yeah. Yeah. A friend who was saying like, she was arguing, well, everything should be public. And I'm like, mm. yeah. But then like information, I don't know. What do you think about that? Like, oh, I think it's a, it's power. Like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. information is power and they, I don't know. 
also maybe there's things maybe if we knew we wouldn't it wouldn't be good. Maybe if the whole <laughs> population knew about certain things, there could be some real um, protests or fear. Well, that was know. the whole reasoning for hiding all of the UFO yeah. sightings and information, right? Is like, oh, we don't want to upset the masses. We don't want uprisings. Yeah. But then yeah, it kind of just like, all right, we don't actually know what these are, and everybody's well. Like, they also eh, like okay. they also chose like the most tumultuous year to an end. Right. So yeah. Everybody's just like. UFOs, okay, I'm just trying to, like, figure out how to, like, knock at this virus. Or <laughs> there's some crazy virus that was yeah. somehow made or not. I don't know. And now there's UFOs. That was, like, yeah. a, a Nate Bargatze. He had, like, a bit about that in his last stand-up, just about, like, how crazy 2020 is. Like, we found out aliens are real. Nobody cares. Like, <laughs> right. like it was just, like, not even an issue or found out UFOs are real. Yeah, for real. It's just so kind of like funny. a side note on the It whole, was such a side note of yeah. that year. <laughs> <laughs> like so literally funny. like government documents that yeah. were like held for years and years yeah. were released yeah <laughs> and the general public's just like okay yeah and i knew it was like a it was like a hearing recently right in congress yeah. like they but apparently it just ended with being like yeah we don't know <laughs> yeah so. i feel like it just like in government like factions there's just like limit of like oh we don't know but we're benefiting from that government doing that thing yeah. with that grant, <laughs> yeah you know <laughs> there's like, money to be made yeah yeah who knows elon musk says there are not aliens so really really he says yeah he's like a prominent person that says he's like if there were aliens i probably would know and i <laughs> and there aren't aliens that i've seen and he's like, and I'm right here shooting stuff into space. That's so, funny. Like, That's a funny quote. Yeah. He would be a probable figure to know. But he would be, a, point, still he would be, be a good point of contact for the aliens, yeah. for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. These guys are in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he could be an alien. Whoa. Did, did you hear they that told theory? They told him to say that. <laughs> that, like, he's just E.T. trying to get home or something? <laughs> that's funny honestly i will say i'm fully back on twitter now like just yeah. straight up <laughs> I, twitter too, Chris. Like, I, I too. totally just like purged all social media in 2020 and i was like absent on twitter for years and years yeah. before that but all like just with this like recent news yeah, and yeah. him flirting with buying it i was like all right let me hop back Same on here and i am just mm -hmm. all in i'm, I'm like, not okay i get why people like i'm this. not i see i like got it and it took like five minutes i was like Okay. Yeah, yeah. No so, photos. Yeah. No pictures. Same. <laughs> same. I started a, a completely fresh account, but yeah. it, it's kind of like a practice. Like you have to build it what, sure. how you want it to be. And when I first started, like, oh, who do you want to follow? Like, do you want to like? It was so boring for like a week mm -hmm. until I was like, okay, wait, I'm only gonna follow people I really am interested in. And now I'm just having. I mean, of course, <laughs> I, I'm not spending that much time on it. Wow. But, you That's know, a handful of minutes like, per, watch per day. I'm like, dang, I'm this is actually really fun. <laughs> interesting. Do you get notifications? Because I get like, no. so and so said this. And it's just like, it's. I mean, it's scary because I actually am interested in like, they're they're catching me. Mm. Like, it's like, yeah. oh, I want to read that. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. So I'm um, so anti-notifications. Oh, I don't even get phone calls. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah I'm same. Just like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't need to be notified about that. Like, <laughs> Yeah, the new focus modes for the iPhones are just oh, like, nice. I'm always on do not disturb, I'm sleeping, don't bug me, call me twice always, if you really Always, always sleeping. It always says when I text Christian, uh, it's the do, do not disturb. Same for you. But I you think... always text me back. <laughs> Because <laughs> yeah. you're always on your phone, I know. just not getting notifications. <laughs> so like you can pin He's on Twitter messages <laughs> or like uh, oh, yeah, conversations. Yeah. Yeah. And I've only had Emily pinned for like the last however many years. Yeah. And then recently I added Levi yes. and Emily was like, mm, you added Levi, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I have, I have like Levi too, so. and Emily. <laughs> Dan Dan has only me. Um but oh. I have I have I have the full slot. I have group chats on there. I have like so many like conversations. It's pinned. so nice when messages did that, the group yeah. chats and the pinning stuff. I was like, yeah. oh my God. Did you watch WWDC, this last one? What, what is that? It's like the Apple conference. Oh. It's like the worldwide Apple developers conference. No. They just had it a couple weeks ago, but they were talking about the new uh, iOS 17 or 18 or whatever number we're on. But you can send messages on iMessage and then you can unsend them so you can take them back oh. and then once you send it you can tap it and then actually edit it Whoa. so levi who That's sends crazy. who who texts <laughs> before he thinks and i just get the most jumbled texts ever i'm just like what does that mean and then i'll get three or four texts afterwards of just like 
<laughs> corrected words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, and, I'm and the same. Wrong way. corrected Exposition. words. Yeah. Like, I'm <laughs> trying to correct, but it's still wrong. But now you can just tap the original message, Whoa. edit it after you've already sent it. And there's a few other things that they're adding, but I'm like, all right. Oh, that's I'm nice. Kind of I don't excited. know if okay. I'm going to ever I have use two, that still. I have <laughs> right? two ideas that Apple, if they're listening, Okay, one should be you could you have a queue of things that you copy paste because oh. something that always drives me nuts is if I'm like mm. copy pasting editing right. I know what you're talking about. There yeah. needs to be like a queue of like the last five things so you can choose. And yeah. then second, I wish that I could mark messages as unread because that's, I'm, a, that's a new feature. Oh, it is. Okay, yeah, it cool. is. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's yeah. I love that with email because if I'm not ready to respond to an email, I'll mark totally. it as unread and then I get to it. Yeah. But with text, I miss them all the time because I just open it and read it and then. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> what I've learned is if you lo- hold and long press, it'll pop it open Mm -hmm. but not actually mark it as read so if i ever want to leave somebody on unread i'll just tip tap and hold to read it to like get like a snapshot and then i just don't do the red thing i do 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 you not i don't don't, know i think i do (laughs) do you see me unread and red yes i do oh shoot i gotta wait christian you have the red red texts i do i do it to try to be a person of integrity (laughs) I don't know why Explain. I do it. I don't know. Do you I, do the red text? No, I don't. No, yeah. no integrity here, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if it's a matter of integrity. <laughs> no, it's, no, no. It's most certainly But maybe not, for but. you, your personality, you know that you just, if, if you if, if you know somebody sees it says red, you want to mm. be intentional. Yeah, respond. and I found a loophole around it, which is <laughs> interesting. Not caring. But so I, you really aren't integrous in your <laughs> I think it shows, like, if I've read something... It's kind of, it starts a, 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 a countdown or a timer. Of just no, you're like, right. You're right. If, if I knew somebody, if it said red, I would just like, I'm just going to respond right away. Yeah. Because mm. I don't want to leave them on red. Yeah. And I've definitely done that where I've, I've gotten a text and then I just, you know, over the course of the week or something, it gets neglected. But if I know that they have seen mm. that I've read this, then I'm like, okay, I got to text them back. That's and so anytime much like I see, psychology of I, like yeah, human I don't know the world we live in. And I'm like... <laughs> I oh know. my god! I never like text thought that etiquette. Far. I remember yeah. talking to our boss at, at this music school I taught in Nashville, and he didn't like understand the importance of like using an emoji now and then, just to like yeah. soften the way. Yeah. So because he would be like, "I need to talk to you after like whatever," and I was like, <laughs> "I'm fired!" Like I'm fired, and I think he was just like, gonna, "I don't remember." Yeah. But it was just it was just, it was as important as like showing me a meme. Like it was mm-hmm. not important at all. But I was like, I literally was like sweating for three minutes because the way you just had no inflection in that text. Mm. <laughs> That's scary. That was one of the, my, my friend Laura Cunningham, she's a director in town, but she, I remember when I was learning how to email people mm-hmm. <laughs> early on, she's like, emails are really important. Always greet them and hope and tell them that you hope they're having a wonderful day. Oh, And I was like, oh. That's nice. Thank you. Yeah. You know, and then just picking up these little things and yeah. then, like smiley faces and stuff. It's important for sure because it shows text kindness, is just so kindness. flat. It is. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I've noticed that in emails, I definitely use more exclamation points. Hmm. And and if I'm texting somebody or going back and forth, I'll kind of mirror however they're communicating. So yeah. if they're a very like <laughs> direct and straight yeah. like period or no emojis, I'll kind of respond like that. But if they're like, dude, exclamation point emojis, I'm like, all right, I'm going to throw it right back at you. And it's yeah, kind it's of matching fun. their energy. Yeah. I heard this really, uh, I think it was like a thread I saw about like um, email uh, with etiquette. And actually, I think I saw this post from the same boss who we told to use more emojis. <laughs> so he's, he's come a long way. But uh, he, it was like a thread talking about all these different things to say in emails. And one thing I really appreciated and it said, uh, instead of saying, like, sorry for taking so long or sorry for this, like, you read this? Too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it said, instead of saying that, just say, like, I appreciate your patience. Because mm-hmm. it kind of creates this world of, like, I owe you a response immediately. And it shouldn't be that way, mm-hmm. you know. And it's also gratitude, like, yeah. finding some small gratitude within a, a message. I read that same thing. Yeah. I, I literally use that all the time. Me too. I, I like, appreciate your patience. Or thank you so much for your patience. <laughs> da, 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 you know, yeah. like. I yeah. think you te- you said that to me a couple <laughs> days ago. You're like, what is that, Levi? I was like, Levi but the probably pod- was like Pachians or something <laughs> spelled wrong. I'm like, Levi the podcast is four days late. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's when it funny. got serious. I appreciate that's your I was patience, like, Christian. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> got to use no, my tricks I mean, and stuff to soften this. Uh, no. Yeah, I was four days late on this podcast. That's posting. funny. It's all right. So I'm you're me. headed up to Colorado. I am going Fun. to tell you right. Nice. The, the bluegrass. 
That's really? What, what does that entail? Honestly, I don't know. I was hanging out with Colton, and then Daniel called me and said, hey, do you want to go to this? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I bought you tickets. And I was like, nice. all right, <laughs> I guess I have to go now. <laughs> so, yeah, we're driving up. That'll so, be fun. Yeah, I've never been to like a thing like that. So Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah. I'm, I don't know what to expect. I think it's like just like a bunch of bluegrass music for three days, and we're camping. Wow. So, I'm like pretty stoked. Dang, and a lot of drugs, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that sounds Bluegrass? like fun. Look at maybe, I don't know. Maybe just like some stoners. I don't smoke weed, so. Yeah. Some weed stoners, I don't know. Yeah, that's something that other people do. <laughs> uh, you're going right after this podcast? Yeah, probably. Nice. nice. Yeah. It starts today, but I don't know. I think Colton's been to it, and he's kind of like, eh. It's just a lot of, he, I think he said yesterday, he's like, it's just a lot of bluegrass, man. And so <laughs> Bluegrass like, is awesome. <laughs> yeah, but I think three days straight is like, yeah. so we might go fishing and then, and then, uh, and then roll up to the. I guess three days is a long time. Yeah. They had a, there was a festival we used to go to in Nashville. I can't remember what it was called. Something Bl- Blue Moon Fest. I don't know. But it was, oh, oh, it was like something Blue Moon Pickin' Party. And I think it was like every month. And just everybody would just bring their banjos and guitars and get in like these little circles. Ooh. It was Whoa. so cool. How was Nashville? You lived there for seven years. Mm-hmm. That was like you lived in New Mexico. Yep. Born and raised here. Born and raised Albuquerque, smallish yep. town. And then Nashville. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was awesome. It was so good. I loved that city so much. I'll always probably look at that as like the fun part of my life. And hopefully there's still a lot more fun <laughs> in the future. But it was just so fun. Like, it was just my friends became my family. You know, I was, like, living on my own to some degree. And it was just a good adventure. Just go get coffee. Go to pickin' festivals. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Just go, you know, go for day drives with friends. It was a fun time. Mm. Yeah. You met your husband out there? Yeah, I met Dan. Actually, like, the week that we moved out there. We met Dan through Chad. Oh, cool. <laughs> How did they know each other? They didn't. I think they both knew some touring people, some yeah. some music oh, people. Oh, uh, Kid, what is it? Uh, rock? I think paper, it was Kid Rock. Paper Rock. <laughs> kid <kids>. Rock, yeah. <laughs> that was their contact. Um, it, was like, it, was, um, it was like a worship. Cardboard Kids. No, no. It was no. like a, a worship no, yeah, was touring thing that they were both new people who were a part of it. Oh. And so, yeah, we met Dan a weekend and we just that's stayed, crazy stayed friends for a couple of years and a few years but yeah we've known and each other then, almost 10 years now and then love and then love yeah. <laughs> are there any aspects cool. of yeah. nashville that you wish albuquerque had <sighs> yeah <laughs> that's a great yeah. question i mean though. i there, yeah there, it's I do. things that you couldn't necessarily ease well, the first thing i would say is not something that's easily transferable and that is the abundance of um rain and just you can grow things really that's true yeah definitely and i miss that and i love high desert i love new mexico i actually do love how i love how it looks here and part of that character is because of the lack of rain but i I miss that although it did get kind of gross like our backyard at one of our houses was just so full of bugs Mm. it was like it was gross ticks yeah, ticks. I remember getting ticks brown out recluse. there. Yeah. There was brown recluse. Yeah, there's some nasty bugs out there. The bugs. You don't have the bugs here. But also, oh, here's what I'll say about Nashville that I wish I saw more of here. There was kind of this gravitational pull of these like altruistic creative types who were just um, visionaries and, and supportive and kind and um, want to make the world a better place. And it was... Um, uh, like contagious, like that kind mm. of energy was so positive. And there are people like that here, but you don't see, it's not like a hub for that. Mm. Um, in fact, I've actually seen at times almost the opposite of that and just, I don't know. So sometimes I miss that. Mm, I feel like that is a a mature artist community. Like there's like, I yeah. feel like in stages of like building a community or like building a city around art, there, there's, there's, I'm just going on where my brain's going, but it mm-hmm. feels like there's stages, and oftentimes it starts with this like kind of like territorial like yeah. thing, uh, yeah. and then after time you just realize like the more artists there are, the more there's an ecosystem for artists, yeah. and um, yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. Don't leave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you and, gotta stay yeah. to make it a better place and make it what you want it to be. Yeah. I feel, okay, so this is another kind of tangent that my brain is just going down, but Emily and I watched the documentary Roadrunner, which is about Anthony Bourdain, and he had, it was like when he first started traveling, he went to Haiti, was like one of his first destinations, and it was right after, uh, it was just like completely war torn and just like, tr- like, I think what, I don't really re- remember what happened in Haiti, but it was just devastated. And there was like a line for food and they were kind of just filming and stuff. And then they, like the crew and him ate, and then they were like, Oh, we have all this leftovers. Let's just give them to these people that are hungry. And then it immediately turned extremely ugly oh. because it was like the biggest people got the food first and then started like fighting and it was like and then they realized oh this is not just like it's not about the food there's like some serious suffering here and they're like fighting for scraps and it just kind of turned into a mess but i like kind of what you were saying i bet like a healthy kind of creative uh space in albuquerque would be like I don't want to say that we're like fighting for scraps right now because like obviously Al- Albuquerque is a very established city. Um, but there is more of a territorial thing like, Hey, this is our land. And yeah. you know, there's not, there's not room for everybody where I feel like in Nashville, oh there's gosh. so much money. There's so many businesses. There's so much, there's so many people that it's just like, there's like, Oh, there's well, room. If you, yeah, there's I'll just go over table. here. I'll go yeah. over here. That's I'll a go great here. analogy there. Well, what's interesting is you were saying that you new, know, New Mexico's third with spending in art. Yeah. So where is that money going? That's true. It's all in yeah. Santa Fe. It's like, Santa Fe. <laughs> yeah. And maybe, to be honest, I don't, I don't know what the art community is like in Santa Fe. Yeah. Everybody I've met there is pretty mature, though. Like, the artists yeah. I've met are, they seem like they're, like, doing their own thing. And mm-hmm. I would say that some of the maybe more mean-spirited territorial, and not that I've seen a ton of it, but what I've seen has been here in Albuquerque amongst young people. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's just kind of a maturity thing. I think so. I think it'll age out, though. I think, I, I hope, and like, like my thought is like, what lens can we present that that guides us towards not having that be yeah. the image that we see when we think of New Mexico as art? Because like, I hear that so often, like Ali and my sister was saying the same thing. Um, and it just breaks my heart because I think that, that we can build something that's that's richer and, and describes what you're describing that you, what you saw in Nashville yeah, or stuff that I saw in LA too. And, but then there's like the whole, like don't change New Mexico for what, from what it is. Like, you know, yeah. don't, mm. you know, so. Well, yeah. Um, Cause I was going to say it takes strong people staying here and then saying, Hey, let's make it what we want to be. But mm-hmm. if there is some sort of weird um, stigma against like gentrifying or whatever the, the creative scene and making it into what we want it to be versus letting it be what it has been in the past. I don't know. That's a, I, I have not heard that uh, yeah. perspective. Or is that still falling into like a poverty mentality mm. that describes potentially? Like, yeah. I mean, yeah. at some point, I think you do have to start changing things, your immediate surroundings, your immediate community into what you want it to be. And that will be contagious. I mean, even, I don't know. I don't know how to like, this is an interesting topic. I don't know the right answer, but Emily and I bought a house in the North Valley in 2020. And when we bought it, it was like, granted the housing market was pretty, uh, uh, not as crazy as it is right now, but we got it for a, a good price. And it was kind of like the, the neighborhood was just okay. It was kind of like, it was just very okay. Very average. But Emily and I moved in and we, within like a year, kind of turned that house into something I think I'm very proud of. I think it looks beautiful from the outside, or at least like, you know, for what, for what we bought it for, for where we're at. Mm -hmm. I think we turned it around and then immediately all of the houses around us started doing landscaping. They started fixing their driveways. They started doing like adding rock and stuff and not all of them, but I I know three or four houses and of course it could just be coincidence you know we're all living in we have different timelines but i'm just saying we kind of invested into our house and then other i think i don't know i don't know if other people got inspired from that or yeah i don't know where i'm trying to go for that but it's it's an interesting conversation you're so right i think that there is something so 
inspiring and so beautiful about somebody just like doing their thing and doing it well yeah. and staying in their lane, stay humble. Um, there's that quote that I mentioned to you, like the one that was uh, the, the one from Proverbs, like look neither to the left nor the right, ponder the path of your own feet. And that's kind of like a, a mantra for my life, like just mm-hmm. try not to get like too caught up in like the cattiness or the competition or anything like that. There's room for everybody at the table. Just do what you do well. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there is room. You're right. <laughs> there is. There's a lot of room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, specifically on the west side. <laughs> about <laughs> That's funny. That's true. Yeah. Um, is there anything else you wanted to get into? Uh, no. No? This is great. Cool. Yeah, I enjoy it. It's kind of fun to just not talk about art that much. I mean, it kind of came up a little bit, but... You know, I feel like the only podcast I've ever done, it's just like, here's my Instagram strategies. <laughs> and I just don't, yeah. I don't, that's not like what I really care about at the end of the day. Um, I, just, I like, actually did ask Emily, I was like, what would you want to hear from Shilling as like a listener? And Emily said she would be curious to hear you talk about balancing your business work life with having a newborn. Yeah. I actually get that question. I'm sure you do. So yeah. much. For people like, how do you do it? How do you? Because yeah. you have to make money, right? I, I mean, do have to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to. Yeah. <laughs> Life isn't free. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think it's like one of those things that you have to accept that there is going to be tension in it. And I don't know if every parent feels that way. But for me, the tension is that I, I want to work and I want to paint and I want to be present with my son at the same time. Like I can be playing with him and just be like, I really feel like painting and it's like driving, or I feel like I should be doing this thing or I, and that, uh, or vice versa. Like if I'm painting and he's awake, I'm like, I'm a bad mom. Like I'm, I'm doing this while, you know, Dan's watching him or whatever. So there's just kind of this tension that I'm learning to just be like, okay with to some degree. And um, as far as like practically trying to balance it, besides just the acceptance. <laughs> um, I, I get up really early. Like I get up five or six and I paint for a few hours or do computer work or whatever I need to do. And then I work during his naps and I work at night. Um, yeah. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not really good at this point at like, I'm not really good at just letting other people watch him while he's awake. I kind of, I don't know if it's just like, I feel guilty or I don't know. I'm just not really able to work really well if he's awake and in my presence. So yeah. you've found a way of balancing time when he's asleep to balance to. your work. I got it. At this point, like, yeah. And also, if he's awake, and if I'm the one watching him, so if Dan's, like, working in the shop, uh, there's no painting while he's awake. Like, yeah. he's, <laughs> he's in the dog bowl. He is going for, like, plant fertilizer. He's going for all the things that, the cactus, like, he loves mm-hmm. the cactus. So yeah, I just, just yeah. non-stop, it's non-stop getting into anything and everything. Anything and everything. And or you have to be feeding him or you have to His be, new trick yeah. is he loves to lift the toilet seat lid and splash yeah. in there. <clears throat> oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's like, learn. well. No. So it's basically a matter of <laughs> you have to do your work while he's asleep. Yeah. Okay. So and then here's what I'll say about that. Like, you have to make the time. Like, you can't just be passive like yeah and that's really hard for some people and some people have that motivation a little more easily but i do find that the more i get into that rhythm the more i like force myself to rally and to like you got to do this like you no, you don't have a boss you don't have an actual deadline i have to make it happen like i yeah. have to just do it um so it takes like a certain amount and dan and i talk about this a lot because he's self-employed as well you got to rally you got to force yourself to do it I had a I had a friend who was uh, runs a barber shop in Beverly Hills, and he doesn't need to show up to work because he doesn't cut hair; he just has the space. But he always he said this really cool thing when we interviewed him. He said, uh, regardless if there's a client at the shop or not, I wake up, I cut my hair, I make sure I'm good, I take a shower, mm-hmm. I eat food, and I go to the shop. And if there's no one there, then I sweep. Wow. And and then I leave at the end of the day. Yeah, he shows up. <laughs> yeah, he shows up, and yeah. that's like that's why he has the biggest barber shop. Like, it's called Giuseppe Franco's in the middle of Beverly Hills, and cuts all these celebrities' hairs. But 
it's because he shows up every day. Yeah. When there's no one there. Yeah. It definitely takes that kind of intentionality. Yeah. yeah. And even like what he was saying, like, I feel like getting up and, you know, brush your teeth, make coffee, put your shoes on, like mm -hmm. run a comb through your hair. Like if you feel like presentable, if you feel like you're put together, it really helps to mm -hmm. just kind of, yeah. Also, you know, what's really interesting. Have you ever heard of like the chronotypes? You ever heard of that? It's like different people have different like circadian rhythms. Mm -hmm. Uh, just kind of naturally, we all have different kind of, um, I guess, times of the day that we were very awake. And for me, I am uh, the chronotype animal, I think was a, a lion. And so I like to be up early and I'm my brain, my synapses are firing early. So the hard work, the computer work, the emails, the, the right now I'm working on a composition class that is taking so much brain power to really articulate how to compose paintings really well for my patrons patrons and um i have to do it early because by the time like two or three rolls around like I'm <laughs> yeah i can't do anything even i'm like oh, i don't know what to make for dinner i can't think <laughs> you expelled all your energy yeah. first thing in the morning early. not yeah. all of it but well, a lot of exercising it, yeah. for i mean i go for a walk in the evening but people who like exercise at night i don't yeah. know where you get that kind of um the energy it takes to do that kind of I yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I'm a I'm definitely a morning person. I can I feel great in the morning, and then typically towards the end of the day, I like once once five or six or seven o'clock, especially with a kid. Yeah. Once that time comes around, I'm just like, okay, dude, I'm done. Like, yeah. I'm gonna start winding down. I'm not trying to, yeah, get serious work done or go work out or do anything. It's actually <laughs> after really, a certain amount. It's really a liberating. Time. For me to like realize that about myself because i don't put pressure on myself at five o'clock or even three o'clock to to do any hard mental work yeah like i just easy choices and and fun tasks you know i was talking to a friend of mine who's going through a, a breakup, breakup thing and he's trying to get through this space of like the fog yeah and and i was just describing exactly like this this loop that you can fall into where you're staying up late because you're bored or you don't know what to do and then you're making bad decisions that lead to the morning mm -hmm. time being even worse and you don't want to wake up at that point and then that leads to the next night being worse because then you just yeah. like compensate for that stay up late again and it's like this this like cyclical pattern can be so destructive and you're in the middle of this fog and you don't realize it yeah but then there is hope that there you can be outside of that fog and it's great yeah and it's that morning clarity and this like time of, of gratefulness in the morning i've been waking up and just trying to find one thing to be grateful for and it's like literally just changed my mornings whenever i, I do that. it and whenever i don't it's like there's just a huge difference yeah and um it's awesome That's <laughs> what, crazy. what were you thankful for this morning uh yeah. i was thankful for the this plant right here yeah because it was not growing well and now it's growing pretty decent so i'm, I'm grateful for that plant too yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it was <laughs> at the beginning of the podcast it was right here and it was so sad <laughs> and so Christian's I was like, like let's put this over i'm like there. all right let's move it closer to the window let's make sure the soil yeah. is nice and wet and moist yeah. and oh. i didn't, now I didn't know you back. had to water plants <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. it's doing great fiddle, this fiddle leaves will come back they cool. they're actually a lot more resilient than i thought they were there was not a green thing on it really yeah and then it just kind of and so then once you have leaves, that's what makes them grow because they're able to grab the uh, photosynthesis or whatever from mm. the face of that leaf. So it'll just create more and more. That's crazy. Yeah. But yeah, that's what I was grateful for. What, are you, what nice. were you guys, did you guys have any grateful moments this morning? This morning? I, or now or whenever. <laughs> I um, watered my, so we got a new hose head from Lowe's. <laughs> it's like one of the long kind of one so you can Emmy yeah. was telling me about this hose head. <laughs> you guys are pumped on this no it, it makes i mean because it's something you do every day and yeah. so you might as well get a good high quality one um and i have to work five mornings out of the week and so i get to water i i used to be the one that watered every single morning but now i i got demoted to watering two days a week instead oh, of seven man. days a week but it's still fine uh but just the simple act of waking up making coffee and going outside and watering the garden and when i water i'm i'm a very um overcompensating and generous uh <laughs> god to my plants you're a good, so good father <laughs> i i give them so much water i 
Um, That's Because I see they're all struggling because Emily doesn't water them. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but I'm like, all right, boys like and, and girls, let's, let's get good water in. Daddy's here. Yeah. <laughs> um, that was my... That's funny. What about you, Shaleen? Oh I'm grateful for so much. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess today uh, I was really grateful that the doctor, or pediatrician, oh, thought yeah. Raphael was doing really good. And I just... Just, yeah, a healthy kid. That's awesome. Mm, yep. I feel really, really grateful and a lot of compassion for parents who are facing struggles in that way. Mm. Yeah. Healthy, grateful. healthy kid. Yeah. And I'm grateful that it's just like a beautiful time of year. Like, I totally love, I was like thinking about it earlier. I'm like, I'm like already not ready for, <laughs> for fall. <laughs> it hasn't even hit the like the midsummer, you know? Oh, no. Like, it, I think that's the 21st. But, you know, once the 21st hits, then we're moving towards fall, yeah, mm. which is a beautiful time of year too. But I think that this year I just have had so much anticipation for the growing season because we started like a garden in our house. So well, I'm just loving this time of year. I have one more. Uh, the forecast. I'm thankful for the forecast. Why? Because of rain, rain, rain. Wait, what? We're, we're entering Ooh, monsoon so season. Yes. Oh, is it actually on the forecast yeah, yet? Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool. On Saturday and Sunday or Sunday, for Monday, there's like 40 or 50% here, chance. We haven't had any rain this whole year. Yeah. We've had Nothing. zero rain since so we're trying like, to, the winter. We're out here trying like, to like start our first season of gardening. <laughs> it's a brutal growing season. It's intense. You ha- it's like so it, dry. Yeah. So zero rain. Uh, but now w- this week we, we do have some rain forecasted. Fingers crossed. But it's looking like it'll actually rain, which I'm that just That means I'm going to be for. picking weeds this year. <laughs> I know, right? With the <laughs> rain comes the weeds. Because right now we're not watering the weeds. Mm. <laughs> and anytime any extra water does get out to water them, it's it's nuts. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like you said, there's so many seeds in the ground. They're just waiting. Yeah. They're biding their time. <laughs> like that one meme. Just like, <laughs> behind the tree. Oh, yeah. that's like... <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's like the biggest realization for me this year in like gardening. I was like, oh, I didn't realize gardening was just like pulling weeds so much and we haven't even gotten rain it's yeah yeah it's like once you start watering soil and making these yeah. weeds just want to come up and if you don't deal with them then and it's what's really discouraging is like so i started this new bed and i put all this um just a bunch of herbs and lettuces and stuff been watering it so far nothing but weeds i'm like why are these weeds so much stronger than yeah. what i want to grow you know mm. so they're very adapted to the soil you're right yeah do weeds have any nutrition some of them they have yeah. they have utility they're they're aerating the soil because they're so they're breaking it up and then it, once you pull them you can it can become mulch so they feed the soil and some of them you know they have some have utility as, as far as just like being pollinators but um the ones we have are horrible you, have like, you can't like eat them though well some yeah i'm sure you could emily got me this book called like medicinal weeds or medicinal I, plants I or that, something yeah. like that or maybe you got it for me I don't, no i've I don't looked remember. at it at your house though uh but it's basically just uh, I guess dissecting all of the different plants and what they potentially have been used for in the past or what you could if you really wanted to. Like even the goat head. Um, <laughs> the goat head, the goat head little part in that oh, book was gosh. like brutal. It was like, yeah, I, I can't remember the language he used, but it was like just wasteland, horrible. Yeah, from hell, evil, straight from, from hell. hell. Yeah, yeah, like the language, I was like, and that's like everything. Like that's like all the, the main weeds. thing we have here. <laughs> but in our house. you could actually, I think there's some sort of like medicinal herbistic or whatever, like herbal so cool. use for the actual goat head. If you were at a place in your life where you want to eat goat heads, <laughs> obviously not when they're dried up and Stand like sharp, coffee. but like <laughs> with goat, goat, <laughs> goat head, head coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but only like the fruit. That'd be interesting. That'd be <laughs> What's, be uh, what are they actually? They're puncture vine. That's what they're called. And they have yeah. these cute little flowers on them. So I think people don't look at them as the threat that they are. Mm-hmm. But I mean, we, I can't even tell you how many times I've just full on <sighs> full weight stepped on oh, a goat God. head that got tracked into our house. And Honestly, we're at the point now where I'll step on a goat head at my house and I'll be like, Shailene. Because <laughs> we've. Wait, That's did you bring weird. them over? No, they're all on the bottom. They're, they're like, <laughs> so if there's goat heads That's in here, hilarious. you'll know they come from Shailene's feet, <laughs> from her shoes. That's hilarious. No, we have so many out as well. I have to pull no, them. No, it's fine. But you have to get them at a certain season. Yeah. And then they pop out. But if you wait, then they're just like. <sighs> <laughs> The bane. That's so funny. Yeah, you can imagine what our life is like. We've had to like make a pact, like okay, no swearing, like because there's been times where like 
you know, Dude, you they're brutal. Just, they hurt It's like so the bad. Lego it, of like yeah. New Mexico. Natural. Yeah. Yeah. They're horrible. Nature's Lego. They're the devil's Legos. They're yeah. horrible. <laughs> but yeah, there's been a few times where we're just. <laughs> and I was like, we don't want to teach our kid that word. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So. Nice. Anyways, well, thanks. this has been good. I think Levi has a festival to get to and yeah. Shalene has a child to get to. And you have... And I have uh, Kirby and the Forgotten Land to get to. You have what? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> if you know, you know. Okay, well... <laughs> is that a video game reference? Yeah, it is. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> Sweet. No, I have, uh, I have a chicken coop to clean. I have... I wish I had a chicken coop to clean. Mm. I have just so chores. You guys gotta get chicken. Thursday night, my chores. We will, but Dan, he, like, he, he knows how to kick the can. And it's annoying. <laughs> but I mean, look at what you guys have done just in the last yeah. couple oh, of years. Oh, kick it's, the can is in like kick the can down the road. Oh, yeah. All my yeah. desires, he kicks them down the road because <laughs> <laughs> he knows that he's going to be the one that he has knows. to deal. And with that's it. why. Oh, yeah. And that's why I'm like, I'm letting him. I'm letting him <laughs> kick this can because I know that he. I need his help with this. So I'm just like, I. I can't just like twist his arm into this that could that could be your project i don't see why it couldn't Uh, be it could but i don't know how to (laughs) like because we need to like build like the roosting boxes and i think we need to fortify it so like critters can't get in there so you could just buy one too yeah well they actually have a good setup they Uh, yeah we got a shed and so what we need to just do like a perimeter so they have like a run yeah Yeah. anyways it'll there's work to be done next time i'm on the podcast i'll tell you all about our (laughs) chicken update and chicken yeah i'm so excited <laughs> the can will not be kicked my yeah. uh my plan for our chickens is just to name them after all of my my girlfriends all my cl- close girlfriends just so that everybody has like a real vested in- interest in if their chicken makes it and mm-hmm. what the pecking order is yeah oh yeah <laughs> dang i want to get on that list you're not a girl oh that's true yeah all the ladies all the ladies cool so, all anyways, right yeah <laughs> well thanks for coming on yeah this has been fun this is good and uh follow shailene on instagram and you have a website and like a newsletter and stuff and a patreon patreon Patreon. yeah Yeah. Yeah. and follow stamina on instagram and youtube yeah where are the places you guys well we're out so actually starting maybe it will have already happened at this point once this is posted but introducing video on spotify so now we'll have video on spotify and youtube and then just all the other also who's winning chess over here well i'm still oh, waiting. <laughs> sorry my move <laughs> dude i'm not good at chess yeah you could, also i can't really moving, tell the actual the tiles <laughs> i know it's kind of a bad chess setup. <laughs> well we just need more contrast not white papers underneath that's true yeah. i didn't know where to put my storyboards because i needed some inspiration for my thing because i was feeling depressed about it so Oh, perfect. All right. All right. Bye, everyone. All right. Bye. (laughs)